Sunday, May 16, 2021. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Welcome to LCJ Live. I've got here with me today a horse because of Dream Horse coming out this week, which I have already seen. And uh, we've had the horse races going on. Also, Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond because Tim Allen, of course, star of Fox's Last Man Standing, which used to be on ABC for six years, these three years on Fox, and that show is coming to an end with a one-hour series finale this Thursday. So I've got uh, I've got Buzz and I've got a horse here with me on this edition of LCJ Live. We have a lot to get to. We've got thoughts on movies, thoughts on television, thoughts on the box office, and uh, thoughts on what's going on in the world of entertainment. There is a lot happening for sure. Uh, first of all, your number one movie in America is Spiral from the Book of Saw with $8.7 million. I saw some estimates go as high as $15 million. And to me, that did seem a little high because even though it's a Saw movie and people like the Saw franchise, with this uh, being the first installment in a few years and with everybody sort of a little tired, I think, of the Saw franchise. With this new perspective of Chris Rock and Sam Jackson involved, I think some people might have been a little hesitant. It is a short runtime of only 90 minutes. Uh, the reviews were mixed. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the film. I think it starts out kind of dull and then gets slightly more intriguing, slightly better as it goes on. Mike Sargent, my co-host of the Too Fast, Two Films podcast, actually had the opposite perspective. He, he liked the uh, early parts of it and didn't like it as much as it went on. But we're still not huge fans of the movie and so I, that I think uh, hurt a little bit. Also think some drive-ins decided to take advantage of the Angelina Jolie movie Those Who Wish Me Dead instead of Spiral. I don't know if that would end up being a huge payoff though because Those Who Wish Me Dead only earned 2.8 million this weekend. I will say this, I don't think they marketed the movie a whole lot. It is a Taylor Sheridan film. He is the Yellowstone mastermind. Also Hell or High Water, Sicario, Wind River, a film I love from 2017. And I don't know if they really marketed this movie well. Uh, the folks at Warner Brothers, they have their priorities on In the Heights already with the screening when I saw it last Sunday on Mother's Day and, and In the Heights coming out in theaters. I think they're putting their attention on that as well as the Conjuring movie coming up and already Space Jam 2 for July. It opens two months from today. So I really think they decided to just get this one out there. Um, only $2.8 million. It's a good film. It's not amazing. It's not spectacular. Also a film I think gets better as it goes along and more intense. Uh, and the performances, Angelina Jolie and Finn Little, who plays the boy in it, are very good together. And there are some flame sequences and some lightning storm sequences that are very good. So those who wish me dead, I do recommend. And if it's at a drive-in near you, go to the drive-ins. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in upstate New York in the Northeast. Uh, finally, we're in the 70s and uh, gorgeous out. Really nice and the first legitimate weekend to... Get outside safely and uh, and take advantage of the drive-ins and the indoor theaters as well because they need the business too. Wrath of Man, another three point seven million. It's up to fifteen million bucks. Uh, Demon Slayer, another one point eight million. Ryan the Last Dragon, one point seven million this weekend. Godzilla vs Kong is five million away from a hundred. It's at ninety five. Made another one point five this weekend. I don't know if it's going to get to a hundred million dollars. Doing 1.5 this weekend. It could do 1.2 maybe next weekend. Maybe another one. If it if it's if the drops are low, um, Godzilla vs Kong could get to 100 million dollars. But it's going to be tough. Five million to go. It's going to be a little tough to do that. Um, new film uh, profile 670 thousand. Finding You about 900 thousand. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1.3 million. Um, and uh, let's see, Army of the Dead, about $800,000. Now, I saw Army of the Dead the other night at home on Netflix. It is in some theaters this uh, right now, and it will be on Netflix this Friday. Boy, this is a case where I like the opening act, and then the last two acts are not good. It just goes on and on and on, and it's just uh, these characters who we care less and less about just shooting zombies in the most dull and generic ways. Uh, Zack Snyder takes his time, and it does not work in that sense. It really does not. Uh, I am disappointed by Army of the Dead. Uh, it starts out with a fun open, and then we get into it a little bit, and then once the this gang goes into the Vegas uh, city limits, it gets in there and, and starts trying to get the money and get the zombies uh, killed, boy, there's nothing there. There's just nothing there, which is really too bad. Um, so yeah, that's Army of the Dead, about 800000 this weekend. Now... 
It's going to be on Netflix Friday, which will probably be big. I've seen a couple other movies that come out Friday on VOD is uh, Riders of Justice, which is already in select theaters. A movie I love. It's my number one movie of the year so far. Riders of Justice with Mads Mikkelsen. Is, it combines a uh, bloody action thriller with relationship drama and bumbling buddy action comedy, and it does it so well. Highly recommend Riders of Justice. Dream Horse. I'm going to have my thoughts, uh, my rapid review of Dream Horse this week, coming up in a day or two. Tony Collette, Damian Lewis, horse racing drama. You, you feel like you may have seen this before. Um, you may have. You think you may have. But let me tell you about Dream Horse a little bit without giving too much of uh, it, my thoughts away because I really can't till tomorrow. Um, it's different because it focuses on the owners more than the horse itself, more than Dream Alliance. This is a true story. Don't look up the true story before you go see Dream Horse. And uh, Tony Collette, I, I wrote a, a blog piece recently about Tony Collette and her performances. And boy, th this movie deserves to be added to the list of some of her best performances. So that's all I'm going to say, but Dream Horse is uh, out in theaters on Friday, and I'll have more on it coming up this week. Uh, as you may have read uh, over the last couple of days, a lot of networks are canceling a lot of shows. And two of the shows that I've been watching got canceled over the last two days. One is Call Your Mother, which is on ABC with Kira Sedgwick. A show that I like, I don't love. Patrick Brammel, who's on it, is very good and deserves another comedy series because his comedic timing is, is very uh, on point. Um, but I, I sort of expected it to get canceled because the quality isn't spectacular and the ratings weren't spectacular. Now, The Unicorn, on the other hand, is a fantastic show. I remember watching the pilot online because CBS released it online in um, early September or even the end of August of uh, 2019. And I remember watching that pilot and laughing a lot and saying to myself, this is a hit show. I mean, this, there's something here. I haven't laughed this much and enjoyed a pilot of a comedy this much in a long time. So I knew there was something special. And I ended up uh, seeing Walton Goggins at the Critics' Choice Awards uh, about five months later in January. And I had previously met him at Critics' Choice a few years earlier, but we talked about The Unicorn and I said, you know, this show has that sincerity to it. And, and he said, yeah, that's what CBS wanted. They were all in on the sincerity, the honesty, and the real factor of this show, and it not trying to be something that it's not. Um, and, and so they clearly were for it for a time, but even with r reports of trying to figure out maybe a lower budget on a season three or rumors, maybe I started, of it going to Paramount Plus instead to keep it alive, uh, CBS decided to pull the plug on the unicorn yesterday, which I think is a mistake. But most of the shows on network TV these days, especially the comedies, are not what the unicorn is. And I'm not just talking about in terms of quality, but in terms of tone and what it's going for. It doesn't try to be smutty. It doesn't try to be um, uh, too risque. It, it, it is its own thing. It's old fashioned in that sense, but refreshing as well in that sense. CBS had it on Thursdays at 8.30 for season one for 18 episodes. When they gave it a season two order of only 13, I got a little concerned. When they moved it to 9.30 on Thursdays, I got a little concerned. And when the numbers weren't spectacular, I, I got even more concerned that they wouldn't want to bring it back. But this is a show that has had a core following from the beginning. And Walton Goggins has recognized it. And the cast and crew members and even some at CBS have recognized that. But unfortunately, just couldn't make it work to do a season three of The Unicorn, which is really too bad, I think, a mistake. Um, I also think it's interesting that NBC has decided to uh, save This Is Us until January, until mid-season. They want to do the final 18 straight through before the series finale. Um, I mean, they really screwed This Is Us this year in terms of how they aired the episodes. Still two to go. Um, so they want to make up for that probably by doing this, but I think fans are not going to be happy uh, once they watch the finale on May 25, and it's like, well, got to wait till January. NBC also not having any comedies on their fall schedule, which some people are saying is the first time in about 40 years that this has happened. And that's a little crazy to me, too. Um, not having comedies, that may turn some people away from the network itself, aside from Sunday Night Football. So, yeah, a lot going on in the world of TV, uh, but uh, rest in peace sitcom-wise to The Unicorn, uh, great run, 31 episodes over two years. And Call Your Mother, 13 episodes this one season. The finale is Wednesday night at 
on ABC. I watched the finale of Mom the other night because you know me. I am the series finale guy. I love their event television. And people are like, really, LCJ? But yes, Mom had its biggest viewership of any episode this season with the series finale the other night. There's proof in and of itself that more people tune in for series finales. And that, I think, is going to happen with Last Man Standing again this Thursday. But I watched the Mom series finale having never seen a full episode of Mom before. I only had seen clips here and there over the years. And what I'll say is this. It, um, there's some wacky moments and some over-the-top things, and they stuff a lot into that finale, but Allison Janney, no surprise, is terrific, and she gets a great speech at the end. I met Allison Janney at Critics' Choice uh, when she won for I, Tanya, and uh, she was very nice, and uh, one of our most talented actresses. You see, you see it as well when you watched her on uh, Celebrity IOU with the Property Brothers, how down-to-earth she is, how game she is to do anything, how passionate she is about uh, being in the industry, and uh, we'll see after eight years what Allison Janney does next. So uh, a lot going on. Again, my thoughts on Dream Horse are coming this week. New Too Fast, Two Films podcast episode right now at TooFast2Films.com. Those Who Wish Me Dead and... Uh, spiral. Also, I saw Woman in the Window on Netflix right now, Amy Adams. Um, this is a movie, all right, where it's a case of, I like the first two-thirds of the film enough, it's good, and then a wacky final act, and it really goes off the whales, and it's very close to a disaster. But Amy Adams, I really believe in Woman in the Window, gives her best performance since American Hustle. And I went back and I looked at all her films she's done since then, and we did have Big Eyes, which she won the Golden Globe for, but... I I don't know if that was an amazing performance in Big Eyes. Um, Arrival, a film that she should have gotten nominated for the Oscar for in the sense of what her momentum was that year and what she does with that performance. Um, though it was not one of my favorite performances that year or one of my favorite movies by any means. I do not love Arrival, but I think with all things considered, she should have been nominated for Arrival. But um, you also have Vice, which she was nominated for a couple years ago. But I really think that her performance in Woman in the Window is, uh, is the best she's done since American Hustle. Because what she does with the characters, you've got a, a teenage boy in this film, you've also got Julianne Moore in a couple of key scenes, and how she interacts with everybody, including Brian Tyree Henry, who uh, is excellent in his supporting role. Um, the way she handles her character, maybe outside of what happens at the end, is really strong. So I do recommend, if you're an Amy Adams fan, you check out Woman in the Window, even though it's not a fantastic film and it really uh, makes a lot of mistakes towards the end and is still very unclear and confusing. Um, so that is, uh, my full review of that is at lights-camera-jackson.com. Marvel's MODOK is a new stop-motion animated comedy series premiering this Friday, uh, May 21st on Hulu. I talked with uh, Jordan Bloom, who's the co-creator of the show, and uh, I'm going to have my LCJ Q&A podcast episode of that coming uh, very soon, uh, probably tomorrow. Also, uh, animationscoop.com Q&A, it'll have with Jordan Bloom, as well as uh, some of the guys at Stupid Buddy Studios, Alex Kamer and Eric Towner, who uh, directed the episodes of Marvel's MODOK, which is this new animated comedy series based, uh, with the iconic comic book character voiced by Patton Oswalt, who is also the co-creator of the show. And uh, it was really fun chatting with everybody about Marvel's MODOK. I've seen a couple of the episodes. So uh, that new LCJ Q&A podcast episode is on the way. I'm also today talking with the director of a major upcoming animated movie, and I will be able to tell you about that very soon. I've also spoken already with uh, two directors of another major upcoming animated movie that I cannot tell you about yet, but I am excited to. You will see that animationscoop.com Q&A on Tuesday. I look forward to sharing that with everybody. So a busy week uh, in the entertainment world um, as we keep going. I, uh, I may be seeing Cruella this week, which I'm really looking forward to. I think this weekend coming up, um, we don't have a huge movie going to the box office. The only real movie is Dream Horse, and it's not going to make a ton of money um, out of the gate uh, because it's a, a smaller film. It's more of an indie, Bleecker Street. It's not going for the mass appeal of even a movie like Saw. So there's going to be headlines next weekend that say, oh, gosh, the box office is down again. Uh, nobody took advantage. But then you have the powerhouse duo of Cruella and A Quiet Place Part 2 in two weekends for Memorial Day weekend that is going to reignite the box office, reinvigorate everybody's spirits about going to the movies 
and that's what everybody's looking forward to, and I think both of those movies could do huge numbers. Now, will A Quiet Place Part 2 do the 50 million that the first Quiet Place opened to three years ago? We'll have to see. How big will Cruella get because it's also on Disney Plus Premier Access? We'll have to see, but I think drive-ins are going to take advantage of these two movies, and people are going to want to go to the drive-ins to see these two, and I think the indoor theaters are going to do very well because people want to get out of the house, they want to take advantage of the nice weather, they want to go to the movies to support the theaters, and they want to see these films on the big screen. I'll be able to share my thoughts on In the Heights this Friday. Uh, I may not have a full review of it yet for Friday, but I'll be. that's when the uh, review embargo is, is Friday. Um, but I will say that it was great last Sunday to be able to see a movie on the big screen again, but also a big musical on the big screen again, and to see all the dance numbers and to see all the songs uh, performed, because In the Heights is a big musical that does one song after the other after the other over the two and a half hours, and you get that big screen experience. So uh, if you want all of my reviews, Go to lights-camera-jackson.com. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at LCJ Reviews and Instagram at LightsCampJackson. We got people out here with the motorcycles. Everybody's uh, happy with the weather here today. Twitter at LCJ Reviews, Instagram at LightsCamJackson, YouTube.com slash LightsCameraJackson. I got a Facebook page as well. And uh, new LCJ Q&A, AnimationScoop.com Q&A. Uh, more reviews are on Culture.com. And uh, we'll see uh, what happens with the box office next weekend. We'll preview some more movies and some more things happening in the entertainment world. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Enjoy this Sunday. Enjoy the week. Stay safe. Stay well. Wear a mask where they ask you to in social distance. And I'll see you next Sunday on LCJ Live. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.